Hey everybody, this is Kathy from Whole Home and Body Health. And today I'm going to do an updated video on the DIY sauna that I made. Um, I'll put a link below to the video I did previously. And I showed you how I made my DIY sauna. And I also showed you that it was a little bit high in the it was pretty high in the electric fields. So I've done some testing and I have figured out a way to dramatically reduce that electric field, so that is what I wanted to show you today. So if you haven't seen that first video, I will go ahead and show you my little setup here. Okay, so this is an office in the home that I am renting right now, and this is the DIY sauna setup that I made. i uh, sorry that the light isn't great. I'll try to see if I can get on this side, but I don't have that much room. So. You can see here, I just have a um, shoe rack that I bought for about 25 bucks. And then I've got four lamps. Now they're so low to the ground because I typically sit on the ground when I'm doing this. And so you need to get um, these lamp clamps here rated appropriately for the light bulb that you get. And these are rated for 250 volts. 250 volts if you can see that that's important um, and so I've got four of them these are basically like <clears throat> heat lamps right here uh, I got them from sauna space for about 10 bucks uh, this one is a ruby Lux light bulb and then I've got one uh, this is a more expensive one from sauna space it was about a hundred bucks maybe 90 bucks anyway these are all 10 bucks a piece and then this whole setup cost me about 200 bucks, just under 200 bucks. And then on the opposite side here, I've basically got a room divider with a mylar space blanket over it to trap heat. So, so when I'm sitting here, I put this behind me to just trap a little bit of extra heat. Um, you know, it it may help minimally, but you know it. It can uh, be a nice little addition if you want, but it's not absolutely necessary. Okay, so now I'm going to turn the camera back around so you can see my testing for the electric fields. Okay, so now I'm gonna do some testing here with my meter. I have my NFA 1000 gigahertz solutions, NFA 1000. Um, <clears throat> this is the best meter for electric and magnetic field testing. The only problem is that it's expensive. It's about $2,000. So obviously for me as an EMF professional, I need it. Um, and I don't have any problem spending that kind of money because I have to have it for my assessments. But for the average person, maybe you don't want to spend $2,000 on a meter like this. So I'll leave some links below um, about meters that are less expensive yet still pretty good for testing. But if you can't afford it, this is definitely the best. Now there's two ways we can test the electric field here, and I'm going to show you both. And that's going to be the potential free, meaning what's just happening in the air um, with the meter not grounded, um, and there's body voltage. And so I'm going to start with the body voltage, and this means I'm testing what's going through my body. So some people like this measurement better because it gives us you know, a, a good representation <clears throat> of what is actually happening to your body. Okay, now for building biology guidelines, of course we want these numbers to be as low as possible all the time. Uh, for body voltage, we test in millivolts and we want the number to be under 100 if possible. You know, again, as low as, po as, low as we po can possibly get, but hopefully we can get that under 100. That's kind of our, our target goal here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this meter on and we're going to see what I get. So I'm testing this probe which is connected to the meter which is plugged into an outlet so it's grounded. So I'm getting about 50 millivolts right here which is not bad. Um, and you can see if I if I go towards a wire, something that's electrified, like this power strip or these wires right here, um, it goes up. So it's going up to about 70 because I'm touching these wires, which are hot because this is plugged in. 
Now this unit isn't even on. So let's see what happens when I turn the sauna on. Okay, so it went up significantly. So I'm at about 1,690 millivolts. That's very high. That's way too high. Um, so if I'm gonna sit here for, you know, a half hour, 40 minutes, I don't wanna be, I'm, I'm at 1,800 now. I don't wanna be in that field. And look what happens if I just touch it. Wow, I go up to 12,000. Yeah, I go up to 12,000 millivolts. Way, way too high. So what do we do to reduce this? This is what I have done. So you can maybe see this metal screen here. It's a little bit difficult to see. My body voltage goes way up when I touch it. But this is just um, aluminum window screen that I bought at the local hardware store. And I cut a strip to fit around the front of the sauna. And it is on the back now. Let me turn this off. Um, I, I cut it to fit the front, but then I realized that that's blocking some of the heat and some of the light. And so I didn't want that. So I thought, well, maybe if I put it to the back, will it help? Um, and I, so I put it to the back and then I'm grounding it. So I have a ground cord here, which I've got plugged into this power strip. So this is a, a grounding cord and I'll leave a link to this below as well. So this is just a cord that you can get off of less EMF or somewhere like that. So it's got this ground plug in here. So it means it's connected to the house grounding system. I'm plugging that in and then I'm going to attach the gator side to the aluminum window screen. All right. So before I do that, let me turn the meter back on and let's see what I'm getting here. 1280 millivolts. So now if I take this clamp and ground the aluminum, okay, so I just grounded that. I'm down to 450 millivolts. So um, definitely uh, decreased it by over half. Let me take it off and we'll see where I'm at again. 1800. And I ground it 480. So it dropped it by half. So so that's good. Um, it's still high though, you know. So so that's just the inherent nature of having electricity where we spend time. Um, so I'm happy that it decreased it by half, but it is still high. So you should be aware that you still do have an electric field on here. Um, and so for a sensitive person, that this may not work. This is potentially not a good idea. Um, but if you are gonna use it, I do use this grounded. So again, the body voltage is a little bit higher than I would like, but it's significantly better than it was. So I, I call that a win. Now I'm gonna um, unhook the meter and I'm just gonna do a potential free reading and see what we get. So for the potential free reading, um, so basically that means we're just measuring what's in the air. I want this number under 0.3 volts per meter. Uh, 0.3 to one uh, is about what, what I'm shooting for. So let me put this back to where it needs to be. Okay, so Right now I've got 17 volts per meter. Again, that's higher than we want, of course. Now let me turn the sauna on. And I go up to 78, about 78 volts per meter, still really high. So what happens if I take my grounding cord and ground it? I go down to 33. So again, um, over half of a reduction, still high, right? But it reduced it by half, which is great. So I know that there's a whole lot of people out there making these DIY systems. 
and uh, they can be really nice, uh, but you know it's important to be aware that you will have this issue. Um, I will continue to try and reduce this field to see if I can get it any lower. And some thoughts I have is I may try to cover the, the, the light bulb wires in some shielding material and ground that shielding material and I think I'll be able to get the levels even lower. But for now, this, this is a good thing that you can do. If you have a system like this, I would strongly recommend at least you know, grounding it to this degree um, so, you, so you can reduce that field because it is quite high. So that's, that's it. That's what I wanted to show you today. I hope you found that helpful. Uh, if so, please um, subscribe to my channel so I can continue to bring you more information like this and hit the bell so you can be updated when I uh, put out a new video. And of course, please leave questions, comments below. I'm always happy to answer questions and engage with you guys. So thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.